I was bullied a lot as a kid for writing poetry and reading comics. First time I cried at school was when an older kid ripped one of my comics and I wanted to smack this kid so bad, but I knew I'd lose the fight. So instead I started freestyling a rap about him in front of everybody because I knew that words were my strength. It made everyone around us laugh at him, but I still got my ass whooped. And I almost felt bad for doing it because comics helped me understand empathy. I knew that everyone has an origin story. All it takes is one bad day for someone to become a supervillain, which is something that I still don't want to contribute to. But these two characters were who I wanted to model myself after at the time. Black Panther King T'Challa was the ruler of a nation, very outspoken, respectful, very calculated. Matt Murdock understood that he was part of a corrupted legal system and used the daredevil persona to pick out the bad seeds. These are concepts that seemed ridiculous to people back in the day, but... Look at us now. You are not alone. The plot and tone has stopped and grown to make us the heroes of this story. The zeros and the dorks, we fear no men with forced needs of living among the mundane. Sun, rain, adjacent phrases. Space and time couldn't age us as long as the pages embrace us the way nobody else did. Go to hell, kid. <laughs> They said it, but I felt it. That fire inside of me melted the cell that they tried to cage us with. I fell in love with comics the same way that I fell in love with hip hop. Larger than life personalities that give you a different perception of the world that you think that you already know. And funny enough, they were both revered for it. On the surface, they might both look violent or explicit, but they both have deeper meanings behind them. The serious themes that I would occasionally inject were for another reason. I began to realize, judging by the fan mail that we received, I began to realize that our books had quite an influence on the readers. A bully couldn't fully comprehend the comic trend because for them, the topic ends when the status does. The difference between that and us is, we wear masks to reveal our identities. I think uh, what I took away from comics the most was a moral compass. They offered these characters with so many imperfections. And it shows you, if there's something that you don't like about yourself, you can change it. You have the freedom to change that. Comic books just also made me question a lot of things. I remember being a kid reading Avengers number 73. And in that issue, there's this uh, celebrity singer named Monica Lynn. Now, Monica Lynn is very outspoken against this organization that's targeting people of color in New York City. And once she goes on live TV and pretty much outs them, they go after her. It made me wonder, why is this woman being targeted for just telling the truth? There was even a, a smaller section in Marvel Comics called Stan Soapbox, and that's part of what made the nerd culture feel like such a movement. It felt like a really tight community where we could all just share our thoughts and not judge one another. Comic book culture really brought people together. I have the best friends that I have today partially due to comic books. Comic books and hip hop. That's where it all started, man. Apart from comic books too, man, I was really into anime and manga. Me and my sister got really into that at a certain point. We used to go to Barnes and Nobles every other weekend or every weekend when my parents pick up some books, some manga, you know, keep the next chapter going. What's the next up on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z? Soul Eater is one of my favorites, actually. That one is all about like finding your energy within and resonating with your energy within, connecting with that, persevering through anything, despite your adversaries and your hurdles. That's what I got from that. My favorite manga is uh, One Piece. Following this dude's journey and just him never giving up. Just he has this goal in mind of being the pirate king. I'll, I'll, I mold and, and form 
how I approach things in my own life after how the main character in that manga goes for what he wants. To pull from and see yourself in and take things from to add to making your personality stronger or your value stronger, you know, that to me is the, the biggest impact of all. We tried to bring comics a little more into the real world. You know, I, I shouldn't really say this, but the chances are that possibly even you and I aren't perfect. I think comic books do a really good job of showing the complexities of just humanity, how people operate, how flawed we are. People with amazing gifts and abilities still make mistakes, sometimes on even grander scale than we do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. I just love the idea that somebody could be out there and risking their lives to, you know, make the world a better place or make the world worse because villains. Spider-Man, who is obviously my favorite superhero, he deals with the same problems I deal with, which is how am I gonna pay rent? You know, I gotta make time for people and I, gotta, I wanna also focus on, you know, what my passions and what I wanna do. Yeah, he still makes time to, help people. It's a quality that I think a lot of people, I don't want to say lack, but ignore or feel like that's a sign of weakness where in comic books they show that as a sign of strength. It's also just new mythology too. It's, it's like our like Egyptian tales and you know the Odyssey telling stories of great triumphs, great failures, understanding that we're not perfect. Even today, when I'm struggling with a decision, there's a lot of times where I'm like, what would Spider-Man do? I've been collecting comics for over 15 years now, and comic books are a huge part of my life. I've always been into nerdy culture and toys. Um, as a kid, I was, of course, into Barbie, but I was also into action figures. And I grew up with a lot of guy cousins. We'd always be playing video games and PlayStation. And I remember one time my cousin bought a wizard magazine that was like, whoa, this is like a whole new world for me. So of course, when I was collecting like, you know, like Seventeen magazine and like Word Up and like The Source and all the magazines from back in the day, then I started collecting comics. And I've been to every single New York Comic Con. Geek culture is, is totally different now. It's cool to see that it's it's getting more popular. I mean, it, it's it's weird. Like back in the day, like we felt like we'd be made fun of, but it's a little more acceptable now. And I guess it's good in a sense, so kids could feel more comfortable just being themselves. But I would say just be true to yourself and who you are and just enjoy what you love. And comic books will always be a part of my life. So I'll be 50 and I'll still be cosplaying. <laughs> You know, it was something that started off as something that I do with my father, you know, kind of a bonding experience. And I'd take my Barb comics home and just look at the artwork, which I'm sure is what appealed to me at first, the artwork, because I definitely wasn't reading them at that time. Good old Barbie. She, uh, she was my first. And if you don't believe me, that's me trying to write my name on the back of them, just in case my father thought that they were his, you know? She's important because she really brought me into the world. I would, you know, rummage through my father's comics. I started reading them and it became therapy for me. You get lost in these worlds, these universes, and it's amazing because it's so different from anything around you, any of the people around you. and. I loved it because everyone around me thought I was weird for numerous reasons, but you know, one of it being that I read comics, especially being a girl who reads comics, people couldn't grasp that for some reason. I think even to this day, that's still something that people can't grasp. You kind of get looked at like you do it to be more attractive to men, which is ridiculous, but I digress. Spawn was the first comic that I really picked up and read and it 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 broke me. Beside remembering the fact that he died, all he could remember was this woman and this woman kept coming to him and he didn't know who she was. 
And in the end, you find out that it's his wife. That was deep for me. A man who was so devoted to his wife that even in death, even after death, he he remembered her so vividly. He knew this woman meant something to him and he had to find out who she was. He was, he was close to my heart. And this little number, are you, are you kidding me? In this, in this number, you couldn't tell me anything after reading Wonder Woman. I'll forever be grateful for the community because I feel like I've never truly felt accepted by people. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. I found my place. <laughs> I found my people. I'll be forever grateful for that because ever since then, again, you can't tell me nothing. You can't. <laughs> a fabulous fate where frantic fanatic fans finally find that long lost classic. The geeks have inherited the earth and it is awesome. I'm a second generation geek. Both my parents are geeks. They grew up reading comic books and watching Star Trek and the Twilight Zone, etc. And by the time that I was born, they made sure that I had a similar upbringing. I was a child in the 1980s and a teenager in the 1990s. So I grew up loving Star Wars, Star Trek, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, Back to the Future. I was a shy, introverted kid who read comics and listened to John Williams scores on his Walkman. Very few people that I knew loved the same things that I did. Imagine my shock and wonder when geek culture just exploded and went mainstream. And now thanks to the internet, there's a whole new world out there filled with people that I can connect with and bond with. Look at us now. Comic books have come such a long way because of the movies, especially the first two comic book films that were nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. I think for a lot of people, it really showcased the quality of the storytelling. Imagination boosts exaggerated truths, captivated proof of the human condition. We were the few men and women who would use them to visit our true deposition of reality. Now we're troops with a vision of harmony. Pardon me if the guard in me is a bit hard and see a few years before this started we weren't the most regarded be that as it may today we have escaped the box they locked us in those who still judge might throw the book at us now but you are not alone look at us now